Only a few years ago, Enron was the nation's seventh largest corporation, valued at almost $70 billion. Pundits praised the company as a new business model. This trading floor was manned by America's best and brightest, charting the futures of energy and power. And high above, each with a private staircase, Ken Lay and Jeff Skilling had built their own plush staterooms. They were known as the smartest guys in the room, captains of a ship. Ken Lay was a Baptist preacher's son and a family that had been poor all its life. And he, throughout his life, worked several jobs as a kid um, and clearly had in mind that things could be better and wanted things to be better and had a huge ambition to make wealth for himself. He told the story. Straight to the top. Whoa. Ken Lay saw in Jeff Stilling, the guy who had the answer to what the future of the natural gas business was supposed to be. Ken Lay is also a guy who considers himself a visionary, and he liked other people he thought of as visionaries. He liked people with big ideas, and Jeff Skilling was a person with the biggest ideas of all. Jeff Skilling's biggest single idea was to find a new way to deliver energy. Rather than be bound by the physical flow of the pipeline, Enron would become a kind of stock market for natural gas. It was a magical new idea transform energy into financial instruments that could be traded like stocks and bonds. So that books was, was The Selfish Gene, about the ways human nature is steered by greed and competition in the service of passing on our genes. At Enron, Skilling wanted to set free the basic instincts of survival of the fittest. Jeff had a very Darwinian view of how the world worked. He was famous for saying once in Enron's early years that money was the only thing that motivated people. Skilling's notion of how the world should work really trickled down and affected everything about how Enron did business. He instituted a system known as the PRC, or Performance Review Committee. It required that people be graded from a 1 to a 5, and roughly 10% of people had to be a 5, and those people were supposed to be fired. Hence, this came to be known as rank and yank. Did we invest all of our 401k in Enron stock? Absolutely. Don't you guys agree? <laughs> <laughs> At the time, things were really rosy for us, and we all had some really nice looking 401ks and pensions, and but it peaked, and then it just started going down, and it went lower and lower and lower. At the peak, I had about 348000 and I sold it all for $1,200, was what I got for it when it was done. While Enron... 